this is our lecture number 31 the title of the lecture is the simple tenses comparison part 4 the simple tenses are the simple present tense the simple past tense and the simple future tense uh to discuss this uh, these tenses we should see the structures at first we will see the structures positive interrogative structures so the first structure of the simple present tense is the positive interrogative structure the second structure of the simple past tense is positive interrogative structure and the third structure of the simple future tense is positive interrogative structure now we will see these structures in detail the structure of the simple present tense is do does yes mv o c question mark i will repeat again do or does plus years plus mv plus o plus c plus question mark this is the structure of the simple present tense now we will see the structure of the simple past tense did plus years plus mv plus o plus c plus question mark again we will see the same structure did plus yes plus mv plus o plus c plus question mark now we will see the structure of the simple future tenses will or shall will or shall plus yes plus mv plus o plus c plus question mark once again we will see the same structure shall or will plus yes plus mv plus o plus c plus question mark we will see the detailed study of these three structures do or does means these are the helping verbs these do or does have come before the uh, interrogative question because they begin the structure then there is the subject yes means what subject plus mv mv means main verb then there is the object object means direct object or indirect object then there is the complement complement means the uh, extra words helping words or additional words we can say which help the sentence to get the proper meaning and then there is the question mark question mark is there because this is the positive interrogative structure because this is the question structure and we can ask the questions with the help of this structure and that's why there is the question mark at the end of this structure now we will see in detail the structure of the simple past tense uh did the beginning of this structure is with did so what is this did this did is the helping verb then yes yes means subject then mv mv means main verb and then object again the same thing object means direct or indirect object plus complement complement means the same thing that complement means additional words extra words we can say and in the last there is the question mark 
and this question mark is there because we can ask the question uh, with this uh, structure in the simple past tense. Now the third structure is there and that is of the simple future tense and we will see that structure in detail. In the beginning of the structure there are two helping words the first is shall and the second is will shall or will plus yes yes means subject we can call it the subject then mv mv means again there is the main verb then object again direct and indirect object c again the same c means what the complement or the additional words or the extra words which help the sentence to get the proper meaning and then uh, question mark so again uh, we will discuss that there is the question mark because this question uh, mark is, uh, is uh, max max the uh, question to ask the question to the person who is before us means we can ask the questions with the help of uh, all these three structures now we have seen the structures means we have seen the structures in the in the match in the math mathematical way huh? now we will see what is the difference among the structures what is the difference among these structures so the first point is that the helping verbs are different in these three structures the helping verbs are different when we study the structure of the simple present tense the question or the interrogative question begins with the or uh, sorry do or does then in the simple past tense structure when we see then this question begins with did and when we see the structure of the simple future tense then this structure begins with shall and will or shall and will so it is very clear that the helping verbs are different then the second point is that the helping verbs have come at the beginning of the structures very important point to be discussed is that these helping verbs have come at the beginning of the structures means uh, when we will make the sentences uh, before those sentences or at the beginning of those sentences there will be these helping verbs and that's why these helping verbs have come uh, at the beginning of the structures then from subject the remaining structures are same from subject uh, what is the point here uh, the helping verbs are different but the subject main verb object complement and question mark these elements in all the three structures are same means there is no any kind of difference so it is very easy to speak and write in these uh, three simple tenses then we will say that or we will discuss that at the end of every structure there is a question remember we just uh, uh, saw, studied or discussed the three structures and we understood or we knew that at the end of every structure there is a question mark. There is a question mark. Why? Because they are the question structures, they are the interrogative structures. That's why at the end of them there is a question mark as they are the question structures means they are making the questions and that's why uh, we have seen we have studied or uh, we have known that 
there is the question marks at the end of the three uh, structures we should speak these sentences in the rising manner uh, very important point is here uh, is that when we talk these uh, questions or when we will talk these uh, uh, sentences structure sentences or when we will talk these uh, interrogative uh, questions we should talk in the rising manner the manner of talking should be rising rising means it should rise up the manner or the way of talking should be in the rising manner how suppose for example do you play cricket do you play cricket do you go there will you come to me will you come to me like this means we should speak or ah, yes yes we should speak in the rising manner that is the important point now we will see some examples and we will discuss again uh, these structures we will see at first the examples of the simple present tense so the first sentence is do plus i plus we plus you plus they talk on her problem honestly so what is the sentence do i we you they talk on her problem honestly it means that do do i talk on her problem honestly do we talk on her problem honestly do do you talk on her problem honestly and the last sentence is do they talk on her problem honestly in this way we should uh, speak uh, in the rising manner the next sentence is does does he does he talk hmm? does he talk on her problem honestly does he talk on her problem honestly does she talk on her problem honestly and does it talk on her problem honestly in this way in the rising manner we should speak all these sentences now we are uh, explaining or we are discussing the examples of the simple past tense so the first example is did i talk did did i talk on her problem honestly did i talk on her problem honestly second example is did we talk on her problem honestly the say, uh, the third example is did you talk on her problem honestly and the fourth example is that did they talk on her problem honestly so in this way we should speak in the rising manner when we will uh, speak the uh, interrogative question or the question or the question sentence of the simple past tense then uh, we are going now to the simple future tense the first sentence is shall i talk shall i talk on her problem honestly shall i talk on her problem honestly second example we will discuss shall 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 we talk on her problem honestly shall we talk on her problem honestly now we will take the next examples will you talk will you talk on her problem honestly will you talk on her problem honestly will they talk on her problem honestly will he talk on her problem honestly then will 
will she talk on her problem honestly in this way we should talk we should pronounce these questions in the rising manner and here again we will see that when we use uh, a shawl in front of I or we that becomes uh, indefinite and when we use a will before I and we uh, uh, that becomes indefinite. When we use a will in front of he, see, eat and they, it becomes that that situation becomes indefinite and when we use shall before he, she, eat and they, that becomes a definite situation. So, uh, this topic we have finished and uh, finally I will talk again on the COVID question that once again the government has uh, uh, spread or extended the lockdown situation. Uh, I hope that you will be there at home so you will not come outside. Thank you. Thank you very much.